Hi, I'm Bob. I love everybody. We are going to do the Voice of Hope weekly broadcast or video or podcast. And it'll be on Sunday nights. And we are inaugurating this new era. We are bringing forth the plan of universal transformation that will lead to world domination in three easy steps, and you are a part of it. So we are inviting you in to just go on this journey. We're going on this journey where we have building blocks week by week. They'll be 15 to 20 minutes, and we'll really give you a little update at times on our personal journey because we're all journeying on this journey called life, and God's given us hope for the day, hope that's unseen, hope against hope, carefree hope, childlike hope, and so we'll help our hearts with that personal update. And then, two, we're going to go into just prophetic, what God is speaking, and he's really bringing forth the hope narrative, and we want to peer into that repeatedly together. The key to learning is repetition with variation and depth, and that's how the Lord works with us. And so we'll do that. Very important, be like your Sunday night church. And then uh, we'll also have plan. We always want to have steps that we can take together and individually. And then we'll uh, forth just have a prayer time as we do. And, and so those are the ingredients and might do them all each time. And we'll just see, you know, how, what feel, what's right each time. So, again, love you for you. This is really exciting. Uh, it's been a season where my health has been growing. So now I can make it till about three in the afternoon without a nap. And that is, feels good. So I described just, I uh, had a good conversation with our board and key team and you are that as well. Just about, uh, really, it's a time where we're going into like Acts 15, a second upper room and we're hearing the Lord about his plans to touch the end of the earth. And so we're going from the church to the kingdom church to the Reformation church. And so some of those things we'll unpack. But for this video today, uh, I want to share, first I'll back up and just say with this first initial time together, the importance of it is our goals together so that we're really clear as we step out together is to get those that are to be roped together as we climb the mountain to be able to be on uh, just the same page with what the Lord's saying. And I won't be the key to all of the voice of the Lord, but I believe it'll be a foundational place that he will spark us together. So he gave me a dream about us being roped together as we go up the mountain. So it's key for us to consistently be together, roped together, there's a difference between a track team where you have somebody over here in the corner throwing the javelin and, and they're doing their own events, somebody else doing the pole ball, and a basketball team where you got to pass the ball, basketball quickly and know each other's moves. And that's what I, we are going to do is be a team, rope together, have some uh, regular times to gather. We have five schools in Kansas City, our first one September 1st through 5th. School Reformation. It's about a new encounter pathway that you're all invited to. We'll have this weekly um, communique, which is more than that. It'll be, we'll open up the scripture and build with you. And there'll be other parts to how we move forward together that we'll lay out uh, in our future uh, times that we share. I just want to say about our goals is the goal is one is God is growing, opening up a great hope narrative for the planet. It's not the shadow of the mountain or the brink of death times, but we're moving into the sunlit fields. And so there's a view and we've discussed this, how God opened up in Norway. I hated misery Christianity and he wanted to change and you're invited into this. And I would love to be a part of this if I was on the other end and I am with you. A new nature of Christianity, and it's a hope-filled Christianity versus a misery, escape the planet. But how do we have fun and build together? So that's our first goal, which we keep hitting that together, and all of a sudden we're above the clouds. All of a sudden we're radiant in the days. We're walking those. We walked on butter. We're walking on air. 
We got delectable feelings. We got a mind that's not a dusty cabin, but a palace filled with golden light. That's primary in our goals together. Another goal together is that you would have a healed and expanded view of God, and I would. He spoke that he said, we have experienced 1% of him in this life, and that's wonderful, but he's got 99% more. And you can see it throughout the scripture. Like Job said, I went from hearing of you with the hearing of the ear to seeing you with the seeing of the eye. To see God in all of life, there's nothing greater in that invitation and that reality. Third is to have a yield and expanded view of you, that your importance as a reformer, your importance as a hopeful king and queen, they can never come in the door with love, out love, appreciation, and hope. Value for who you are in whatever mountain that God has placed you, and to make that very distinct and be scientists of kingdom callings, diverse callings, and then pack that together along this journey. Then to have a healed and expanded view of our future. That Jesus said, John 16, 33, world's got challenges, but I've overcome the world. And so you see the future with a sense of the God of the trump card, the God who's the overcomer. Well, those are some of our goals. I would just add to that. We have a goal to train you, equip you as ambassadors of hope during this time. That there are many hope hubs and 50 million hope reformers that are coming forth from a lot of movements, a lot of places in education, a lot of places in the political. In fact, we had such a ground swell, we just went on overload for a while. My health, we had to draw back. So now it's this is an opportunity for the symphony of hope to come together. It's not going to be built around one man or others, a uh, few. And so there's this invitation uh, for you as ambassadors of hope where we'll go to the classroom in these times together of useful information, classroom of useful planning, which I have dreamed about a number of times where we're in a heavenly room and he's pulling off books that are beautiful, dusting them off like the book of hope that hadn't been dusted off for 6,000 years. It's more than an allegory, it's real. He progressively opens up his ways in the scripture, his face, his nature, the Psalm 67. We'll open that up together, and he's going to have us graduate. Different rows of understanding, different rows of hope, and then we'll seed the clouds. That means we'll speak into different places, so different activities build business different ways, and we won't be changed by the present system or the ch wrong systems where those apply, but we'll change them. Through the knowledge of our God, we're going to empower and graduate and reformers, ambassadors of hope, don't go alone. They aren't revivalists. They don't go and just give their life up for the sake of a cause and die alone in the wilderness. They go together with health. And so you're invited to do that. We're invited to do that together and go on this journey together. So they're ambassadors of hope. And they graduate, and then I saw they'd have their own blue lights, and they would go to different hope hubs. There's many places that are inviting us to come to bring how to build a hope center, how to bring a hope hearing center, how to bring a... a Hope Reformation Center, Hope Healing Center, Hope Adoration Center. And we'll unpack these terms so they don't sound jargony, so they have power to the ground. But you will be equipped in these times for really the map for the blueprint for Reformation, a map for the future, and the implementation plan. And we are inviting you to go on this journey with us and it's a great invitation. It's an honored invitation. We will mine out the gold for you, for the generals, from the ones who have roles that lead their families uh, or themselves to those who lead the many. It's going to be a garden for all and a flower for one. We'll start out these next number of weeks by looking into the hole in the ground. And that was a dream that I had shortly after Bob Jones died. 
who was a, obviously a very close to a mentor to me, a best friend, a father, and had uh, spoken to me before he died. I'd been with him several times in the last six months of his life. And he had spoken about just, he was looking off into the distance. He was seeing 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. What eyes long to see, ears long to hear. And he was speaking to me about where the Holy Ghost Hope Glory Train was going to go and just about the Radiant Cities. And we we're having some great conversations with Bonnie. And, and there were others there that came, Che, and it was just a wonderful time. And, and one thing that happened was uh, just before he died, the Lord spoke to me and said, he'll have to be moving on pretty soon. Or Bob had said that to me, I'm sorry. And he said, and you'll have to go to the next level. Well, after he died, I just, this is, there's been a variety of dreams, but one that that is very significant to where we'll go together here in these next weeks is he spoke, and this is just validated in the scripture and what in many confirmations he spoke about. Uh, he took me walking with a group, a large group of just leaders and others, and he walked me up, and there was a building that was kind of tilted, but it was a, a beautiful building, and it was the building of prayer. And he was talking about how it was to move from decrees and to decrees and not rote prayer, and it was something I needed to hear, and it was substantial, and it was really intimate with the Father, and there was a lot of understanding about how to just move forward in a different way and how we encounter the Lord and how we address Him, how we adore Him. And so that was the first building and how we inquire of Him. And the second building He pointed to and we all saw was the building of revival. And people were being revived in there. They were being revived in the miracles. They were being revived in the oil and their soul and the presence. It was heaven. Great oil, great activity of God, and great touches on the people. And about half the lights to three-quarters of the lights were on in the building. And he said there's more to do in that building. So there were more lights to come on in different places and different churches. And it wasn't like the work of revival had been done. But then he said, do you want to see, and again, the understanding of Ecclesiastes 7 and 18, you don't grab hold of one with, and let go of the other. That there was this progression of building. He said, now do you want to see in this season what's being built? It was kind of like the revival was the David season, taking the territory, winning the warfare, now it was the Solomon or the Jedediah season. It was walking us up uh, to what appeared like nothing. And we kept getting closer and closer. We could tell from the way he was walking to something. And there was this awe on his face. And there was a narrator next to him who became the focal point and represented the Lord. And we walked up on what appeared like the Grand Canyon. Uh, just a huge, huge hole in the ground. It was 20 stories deep beyond that. And there were thousands of workers down in there. And they had these lights on their head. And they were d drilling out these piers. And, and these piers were five piers that the narrator spoke to that were building the foundation for a Hope Reformation. And we will unpack that. But he looked into the ground and he made this point. It was substantial. Talked about the different peers. Talked about how they would lay the foundation for reformation. I've had many dreams since then about the foundation and about the house. And different ones building out different rooms in the house. And it's just wonderful. But the real challenge and the real key was there needed to be a leadership shift. And there was a shift that would help enable people or bring about this awareness, this need to look into the hole in the ground. That it was very difficult for many to leave what they were building and to walk over and look into a hole in the ground. Because it seemed like there was nothing there. And it just a start-up work. 
And, you know, all that comes with that. I've started businesses. I understand if you're successful somewhere, it's very difficult to leave it. And, uh, and again, we're not leaving it. But there was an obviously an emphasis of us always, he kept repeating, it's time to look into the hole in the ground. And he spoke and he said, you cannot continue to reproduce past successes in the same way. And there was other challenges. And I had this picture, this happened to me as a child, and it happened in this dream. A few of the leaders were, did this. When I was a child, my whole family decided, and we didn't have many resources. And it was almost impossible to get up the money and everybody to gather. We had five kids in the family and extended family to go somewhere. And so all this work done to plan this trip, to make it happen, to go to the Grand Canyon. We all drive up to the Grand Canyon. It takes, you know, got grandma and grandpa, got everybody. And it takes, again, tremendous administration, tremendous effort. We all walk up at the same time. And my grandmother, God rest her soul, bless her, walks up with all this planning, everything, looks in and says, it's nothing but a hole in the ground. And walks away and sits in the car and waits for us. And we're all astounded because we saw majesty. We saw wonder. We saw all the effort and the fruits of our labor were way beyond. I mean, the reward, the conclusion was way beyond whatever we could dream. But all she saw was a hole in the ground. And she was done. Well, I saw many leaders that said, it's just a hole in the ground. And got back into their cars and they were to head up this mountain where the greatest show on earth was, or really build out this hole that led to that. But they just said, it's just a hole in the ground. And so I want to really encourage us as we come into this time together of listening week by week. I don't need to build a ministry. We don't need to do anything. We get to love our God, and we get to ask him what's on his heart. And enough of you have enough history with me that knows I don't need to do this. We have something that we're called to build together for the sake of the children and the children's children and those that are the older generation. They had a room in this house of reformation. They were feeding the young reformers and others. This is going to help many find their place that haven't just fit right. So we're going to go into these seven leadership shifts over these next six, seven broadcast. I might marry a couple of them together. So go along with us. And then we'll have a plan for how you might feed your people, how you might feed your family, and how we might continue together. Till then, we got September 5th, uh, first, excuse me, through 5th. We got a school here. Next week, I'll be in Chase. I'll speak to some leadership shifts. I have the opening session, and Bill doesn't know it, but I'm going to take part of his session. And he, he just, you're in, Bill. And uh, there'll be some other times we're going to get to commission people. Then right after that, I go to Australia. Now we'll have time here. But with Francis Lowe and with Bill and Peter McHugh, it's a large church there. And there's a Hope Hub that's amazing there. And we're just going to try and get snippets of that broadcast so we can go on this fun trail and journey together. And then right after that, Kona, a little while after that, with my son and with Lauren and uh, David Cunningham. I believe Lauren will be there. I get to see him each time. It's wonderful. But speak to their Awaken group and then John Go, their um, group uh, there that's a reformers group. It's a wonderful. And there's two or three other groups that we're going to connect with. Might be part of that time together uh, where we're just talking to our friends at YWAM about Reformation. So love you. Stay tuned next week. Ba 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 boom.